welcome everybody to the executive team questions and answers. Um, today we've got um, Jen Guiva uh, for HR in place of Claire Teeny. We've got Mark Taylor in place of Sue Alcock. We should have Linda on the call, but I can't see her at the moment for Anne Maria. Julie Atfield is our acting chief executive today. So thank you, Julie, for um, being the boss this week. And, um, 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 <laughs> and then and there's me, the, I'm Yolanda I'm Martin, Martin, Associate Director of Communications and Engagement. Um, as is usual, Julie, we'll hand over to you in the CEO role for you to say a few words before we move into the questions that we've already had submitted. If anybody has got any questions going through the meeting, then please just put them in the chat and we'll pick those up. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm yet yeah, I'm standing in for John this week, so uh, I'm pleased it's Wednesday and I can't wait till it's Friday. So anybody who's uh, covering for, for colleagues, um, you'll know what that means. So. Um, so uh, just a few sort of comments by way of introduction, um, obviously to say hello and um, just perhaps mention a few things that are going on around us. Um, we're all sort of facing the same issues, I think, this week. So um, there's the pending Freedom Day um, where we're obviously seeing the real tension between um, you know, people wanting to do things that they've not done for quite some time, um, be that sort of social things or travel or or just seeing more people. And obviously there's a real tension at the moment between that and the growing cases um, of COVID that we've got. So I think everybody's, uh, you know, everybody that we know and you will all be very much aware of that and that the impact of that tension um, both at home and at work so um, so thank you all for kind of working through sort of quite turbulent times still and um, we'll no doubt talk a bit more about what some of that means um, through the Q&A. Um, in reality um, for services and health services it's, it's a very busy time um, whether it's primary care or into the acute hospitals who are working really hard, you know, to recover um, their elective activity and reduce waiting time. So there's a lot of pressure actually um, in the health system around us. Um, and, you know, that does absolutely correspond with, with where we're at in terms of activity. And um, you can't get away from as well the impact of that on, on NHS staff. Uh, both for us and more broadly. So that's something that um, we're very conscious of and very um, cited on. So um, well-being um, and supporting staff is, is at the forefront for us as we continue with this. Um, I do think um, it's impossible this week not to mention the football. Um, I know it was in one of the sort of staff messages earlier on in the week and I think it's been a a topic of reflection for for everybody really um and it's it's I still um I'm reflecting on it really and I'm a bit of a reflector but um you know something that was so positive turned out to be so divisive and I think that you know, it, it's brought about um, and really exemplified a quite, you know, a massive flaw in, in our society, really. And um, the events that follow the football, I think we all agree, are absolutely abhorrent. And um, we do need to stand together to make sure that um, everybody's lives are better um, on the back of some of that. So I do think, you know, it, it, it does really drive home to me that it's all our responsibility to tackle discrimination and prejudice um, um, around us. So I think um, I know that's um, a sentiment that that my colleagues share. Um, so just um, a bit about um, some of the broader challenges. There are quite a few questions in the Q&A about um, where the landscape will lead us over the next few weeks. So 
we'll do our best to to work through them uh, through the Q and A. So I'll I'll pass back to Yolanda. Thank you, Julie. <clears throat> Just to say as well, we've had some comments back from colleagues across the organisation about the support that you gave. Um, in your chief executives briefing a couple of days ago so just wanted to say thank you on behalf of everybody for for recognizing that and addressing it um the first question is about covid we've got quite a few as you say julie covid related questions so people are asking what are the implications of easing restrictions on freedom day um in healthcare settings so if you wouldn't mind answering that one julie um that would be appreciated thank you so you think these things are straightforward, but but they never are, and there will be um, there will be differences between how we will act at work and how we will act out of work. That you know there have been, um, I suppose, different sets of of conditions and rules for us all along, um, and there is an expectation, I think, that our staff will continue to conduct themselves in a way that exemplifies the right things and and that's about protecting our staff and protecting our patients so you can't entirely divorce that from what you do outside of work really so when you go in nightclubbing into the casino um, if you are would you kind of bear that in mind um, and I know that the landscape will be changing about where you go you know where you travel to what events you 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 know you will go to and it's a bit about i think recognizing that there are still risks um and we we are in a, a place of work where that really matters um so it's just to kind of take that liberation um in a measured way although i can't tell you what to do in a casino because really i've got no idea but um, more broadly, though, at work, um, and we really appreciate and are grateful for the way that staff have worked, you know, tirelessly around PPE, social distancing, you know, trying to support good ventilation, hand hygiene. Um, and, you know, particularly about the wearing of masks, um, we're not expecting any changes to be made to our working practices around PPE and IPC for the time being. They, the, our practices will and, and are standing as, as they have done. So, unfortunately, they're, they're, please don't anticipate swift announcements about you won't need to wear masks. Um, because that will that will undoubtedly now continue and um, we will work to translate whatever comes um, for us around anything else around offices and etc but at the moment please um, maintain um, your good practices as, as you do now and the same applies to to visiting and so forth so so you know for us um, in reality there aren't any changes at the moment and I think that will continue um, and it's obviously about the risk that 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 we're working with um, currently so I think I've covered that one you're on mute Yolanda thank you for pointing that out Julie <laughs> Okay. Just to say thank you for pointing out the difference between the healthcare setting and um, being out in public. I think that's that's what staff are, are really looking for, is that sort of guidance from, from us. Um, I will come to you, Linda, in a couple of minutes for a, a question, a couple of questions for you to answer, please, if that's all right, about the lateral flow test kits. But Julie, we've had another question in asking about how, what are we doing to encourage vaccination, particularly amongst younger people? Yeah, so absolutely. The push at the moment is um, the particular focus on the 18 to 39 year olds. And we are trying to hit an 85 percent target, I think, by um by the 19th of this month uh, we are going to be quite challenged 
um, to meet that. So there is a lot of campaigning um, going on for the young sort of, I'll call it the younger age group. Um, and, you know, a lot of social media um, to to put the message out about getting getting that age group to have their jab. I mean, we can all play a part in encouraging that, whether it's in clinical conversations or, you know, our social um, circles to to kind of get people to, you know, pass on it, pass it on and encourage everyone to to get a jab. Um, there's a particularly, um, and it won't be surprising, there's quite a low uptake as well in the severe mental illness cohort of patients. Some of those will be in that age group too. So if you're out having um, any conversations, um, particularly for mental health services with the patients, please make sure you check out if they've had their jab. And... Um, we can help you find ways to make it easier for for your patients so um, just to just to re-raise that um back to the young younger people there's a lot of work going on around nottinghamshire there's um there's uh, going to be a vaccination bus um, roving around they're at Trent Bridge when it's the England versus Pakistan match on Friday so we've got to work really hard um to get young people to get their jab and I think there's some um, work being considered about um, making access to the jab easier for people who can't travel and so forth so we've still got a lot of work to do um, and that's all of our jobs really to to kind of get that get that moving still and it's you know the, the overwhelming issue it's people's biggest protection um, from COVID and it's going to be more important going into winter. So, thank you. Thank you, Julie. I nearly forgot to unclick my mute again. If I could move over now to Linda. Um, welcome, Linda. Thank you for joining us. Um, somebody's put in the question about are we no longer receiving the lateral flow testing kits? Okay, so just to answer from that, um, one of the things we should um, be mindful of is that um, lateral flow testing has been encouraged for individuals, not just in um, the NHS, but even people in their own homes. They've been This has been going on now since last year, where people are ordering the kits themselves. So as a trust, we will no longer be receiving our supply of lateral flow test, testing kits for the staff, um, however, we still have some in stock, so we're encouraging colleagues to utilize the ones that they have on them now, and they can still order some of the stock that we have via the sort of um, routes we've had in their local areas or the PE, PPE coordinators. So approximately 600 lateral flow testing kits that we still have that people can access. There's a there's a national um, website, it's a Gov website, where everyone will be able to request and order their own kit. So this will be shared. Yolanda, will it be put on the chat and also in our daily briefings comms for colleagues? Yes. So this information will be shared. We'll also ask it to be shared in um, team meetings so that those who haven't been able to access their emails can get the information they're working in wards or other community teams will ask that um, team managers make um, staff in their teams aware because we, we recognize that it's not everyone who can quickly get to um, a computer and read emails and other things. So we will be asking for that to be cascaded down. But um, as things stand now, the trust won't be receiving further supplies, so we will all have to order our own. Um, lateral flow testing kits. We will still be required to record our results, so we will still need to continue having our twice weekly test and then from there to upload our results on to connect. And there's various ways that colleagues can then upload their results. Thank you, Linda. And then sticking with you, Linda. Um, so it's quite a long question, but I'll try and summarise it. The one about both jabs. 
So as someone who's had both jabs, but is in one of the groups, it may not be effective. But in one of the groups, it may not be effective for. Do the trust plan on offering st staff antibody tests to check staff have antibodies immunity at all? This person works in the community. Yeah, so as a trust, we follow government guidance and the guidance that is then cascaded to us from NHS England and Improvement. And currently, there's no mention that um, antibody testing will then be rolled out for NHS organisations and the staff. So we are not in a situation where we can implement guidance that we've not received. So we're not going to be offering that at this time. If the guidance changes and it is being rolled out, then we would follow that. We would follow that guidance. OK. Thank you, Linda. Um, and then this one, I think I'm coming back to you for Julie. Mm -hmm. Dropped off my screen. Um, on June the 18th, the Duchess of Cambridge launched the Royal Foundation Centre for Early Childhood with a focus on researching, campaigning, and collaborating to ra raise awareness of and action on the transformative impact of early childhood. Um, wondered whether the Trust was involved in any of the research. Are we involved in working with the centre or have plans to be involved in this and to develop a programme to implement change? And I noticed that Mark is on the call. So if you needed any backup on this one, Julie, I think you might be able to get it from Mark. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, should we do that in reverse order then, Mark? Did you want to say something about it first, just in case? <laughs> OK. Um, Put you on the spot there, Mark. Sorry. Oh, there <laughs> She's got John shoes on. <clears throat> no, that's fine. Um, in fact, if I'm honest, um, so I... I I became aware of this. The, the person who put the call in emailed me, and so I've been looking into it. So, yes, there's a report. I think what it does is it describes a lot of the research that's gone on in, a, in before us. Um, so, as, in terms of what the trust uh, is doing, with, if I put my evidence hat on, it would be I'd be asking trust services to, to, to take that report and see how they can embed the learnings from there in the services. Um, as far as have we been involved, I'm not aware and I've reached out to colleagues I've, I've not heard back, but I don't think we have. However, if you look at the references at the back of the report, um, uh, Professor uh, Kappel uh, Sial, one of our uh, uh, CAMS psychiatrists, has been cited on the references. So some of the work that we do through this trust has been incorporated into that um, piece of research. Uh, so, yeah, I think, and I'm sorry, I've also reached out to the, the Royal Foundation so to see if there is any opportunity for collaboration. But as it stands at the moment, I, I don't know if we have, uh, but if we can, I think we should. Yeah. OK, I, I just checked. I just wanted to check that I wasn't going to or we weren't going to contradict each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine because um, no, we weren't involved in the research. Um, clearly, it's it's very influential, and the report is going to be very influential. So um, we are taking the obviously the findings from the workshop, uh, particularly in September, um, with our commissioners to look at how we take forward the findings um, and guidance from the documents. And Capel, yes, um, sort of referred to it, uh, his works sort of integrated into the report. So the plan is to put this into our transformation plans for next year. Um, and, you know, we are um, intending to work um, to roll out some of the training actually in that plan as well for band six and seven practitioners particularly. Um, to support um, the development of er early relationships, which is a key part of the research. So, um, yes, I think we're definitely on it. And, and also um, the Family Nurse Partnership Programme um, is supporting the implementation of the findings as well. So that, you know, working with vulnerable young people across the patch. So, um, yeah, so I think um, we've got good you know, early plans around that and are starting to work through uh, the recommendations with our commissioners and we'll start to see it shape up, I think, from about quarter three this year. So um, we will have something to show, I think, into next year about how we're implementing the findings. So that was a, a good question and I think, uh, uh, you know, to 
-hmm. a response that shows we're on it, even if we weren't involved in the research specifically. Thanks. Thank you for the double act, both of you there. And sorry to have put you in the hot seat there, Mark, but thank you. I knew you'd know all about it. You could, of course, have said you know nothing at all about it and just left it with Julie. <laughs> but Next time. <laughs> Um, the next question is one that I'm going to answer. So we've had a question in asking about when the Trust AGM is this year. Um, so it's on MS Teams again, as last year. It's on the 22nd of July at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, people need to register. The details are all over Connect on the Trust website. And um, we'll be talking about the Trust performance and an update from the governors. And as is our way, we can, you can also ask a question which will be answered by one of the trust executive team members during the meeting. I'll drop the um, email address into the chat. And so if you've got any questions for the executive team or any members of the board, actually, um, you can you can send those to us and feel free to join the meeting. The next question um, that I'm going to answer was that we've had. Um, we've been very, very fortunate to be awarded the George Cross. So the NHS was awarded the George Cross um, fairly recently and we've had quite a few questions um, via the Trust Staff Facebook group and also on email to the comms team and to myself um, asking whether the Trust is going to do anything. <clears throat> I've reached out to my national and regional colleagues to say have other people been asking the same and we have um, and so we're just checking whether anything is going to be done nationally. Um, if not, we probably will do something locally. And the ideas that have been coming forward so far have been either for a little mini pin badge. Um, I know that people are fond of putting them on their lanyards and uh, on their jackets and things, or maybe a glass paperweight. Um, so we've had some ideas in. If anybody's got any other ideas, um, just let me know and happy for them to be considered. And we will engage with our staff before we embark on anything, obviously. Um, but just let the comms team know any ideas that you might have. Um, moving on, um, I'm coming now to you, Jen. Um, there's a question, quite a long question again, about self-development and continuous learning and the culture of the trust. Oh, excuse me. And the options available. I can't read the rest of the question because I'm choking. I'll take over. <laughs> um, if you put yourself on mute. Hand over to you to answer the question, that'd be great. That's fine. Um, so this question um, essentially asks whether we can um, use our training budget um, to allocate staff who would like to, to do open university courses, um, because we know in this day and age, a lot of the, they're obviously available online, distance learning. Um, so the trust um, receives its educational um, funding from a national organisation called Health Education England. Um, and there are two um, pots of funding and um, one called the Workforce Development Funding and one called Continual Professional Development. Um, obviously, with it being national money, um, there are rules around how you can spend them and what you can spend the different pots on. So, um, so one is far more clinically based, the other has a wider remit. Um, I not saying that open university is not an option, but we will need to look into the rules around the pots of funding on that um, for a future year and um, to see whether that's available. But I have had conversations with um, Health Education England recently and um, where they are encouraging trust to use their funding in a more diverse manner than we have traditionally. So not using traditional educational establishments, more um, virtual learning, um, you know, as, as things have changed in the pandemic. So um, really good um, suggestion and we'll look into it um, as part of our trust um, training needs analysis um, and in terms of the funding that we're allowed to spend. OK. <coughs> and the next one's about mandatory updates. So. Someone's asking why there isn't an annual mandatory update day where all the yearly training sessions we need to undertake are covered on the same day. And they're saying it's really difficult for part time workers to schedule in the training days and the distance travelled from those that live in the north of the county um, has been proving a little bit problematic. So if you're happy to answer that one as well, Jen, while you're there. 
Um, so, so first of all, um, for um, many people, a lot of their training is now on e-learning. So there is absolutely nothing to stop local leaders um, managing training in that fashion. So rather than allocating a clinical shift, they could be allocated a training shift. Um, obviously, if staffing allows, um, noting that we have obviously have a lot of pressures at the moment due to COVID and isolation, etc. Um, our mandatory training has changed beyond recognition since March 2020. So we very quickly had derogations in place. We had to pull back on face to face training. Everyone's familiar with this. We can't have that many people in the room. Um, and as we referenced earlier in the call, even though it's Freedom Day for um, the country on the 19th of July, healthcare settings are a very different place and we will continue to need to be really careful around COVID. Um, um, protections. Um, we need to do a piece of work to um, look at what our mandatory training looks like um, post-pandemic or um, with the impact of COVID. Um, and I think um, that idea is a really, really good one um, to offer what, what I would describe, people call it block training. Um, so you get all your training done in one um, session. Um, that suits some services, doesn't suit others. I think some of the services at Rampton already do this or did do pre-pandemic. Um, so I always say it's not one size fits all in a trust as complex and um, geographically spread as this. Um, but we are starting to look at those plans in terms of how many people we can have in the room, how much we can um, do online and indeed what training we absolutely need to do in terms of the mandatory training. So what 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 syllabuses do we need? How often do they need to happen? And um, so that's a big piece of work for our team in the next few months. Thank you, Jen. Much appreciated. Um, we haven't received any more um, questions, Julie. So I wonder if I could just hand back to you now to sort of sum up. And I know that you want to mention something yeah. about isolating of staff and the test and trace app. Oh, Jen's got a hand up. We did have a, um, a very late question in that's got quite a simple answer. Do you want me to yes. the one about? Um, so we had a question in um, right at, um, just about quarter to one around the um, annual reward statement. So people who've been in the NHS a while will know that at the end of each year, you can pull off your total reward statement, which details things like a summary of your pension, um, your pay for the year, etc. And um, there was a question in um, this, uh, this morning just asking when that will be available. Um, and our payroll colleagues came back to us really quickly and said that will be available by the end of August. Thank you, Jen. Sorry, sorry I forgot it's about that. No, it's fine. I'm sorry that I forgot that you had that late question come through. Thank you for picking that up. So now I'll hand over to you, Julie. Yeah, I, I just um, did forget to mention earlier about, um, and I, I know that I did reference it, sort of staff absence more broadly, but um, just to say, um, whilst last weekend there were um, some press statements made about test and trace and um, NHS staff being treated differently um, and some changes were going to be made, um, we are obviously in, have it, we are experiencing an increasing number of staff absent, um, and a lot of those are staff um, who are isolating, and some contacted via test and trace, but some pinged. I, I don't know if pinged is the right ping, pinged is the term that everybody uses. Pinged uh, because of the app. Now, the issue about that is clearly um, it's pinging a lot of people who haven't had any discernible contact so um, for example you know you could have just um, gone to a restaurant or a pub and you know done your code or or it can have located you and even if you ate outside uh, you can still be pinged so a lot of our staff like everybody else are being pinged um, so we won't re keep referring to it as that it must be a better way but um, just to say that in the coming few days we are looking at um, perhaps how we respond uh, to the different types of isolation that that are impacting on staffing and so there will be I think something coming out early next week about some changes but we do want to consider them properly and carefully and make sure that we've got proper risk assessment processes in place if, if we're going to make some changes to how we manage um, any of the suggested isolations. So I'm just flagging that because I didn't want 
colleagues to be on the receiving end of staff shortages and think well what you know what's going on what are we going to do to try and manage this so just to say it's um it's the top of our um, job list at the moment and we have started to do some work on that as have other nhs organizations so we will be falling in line with with our colleagues so i just wanted to flag that really thanks yolanda and and also I can't uh, get off without saying a big sort of thank you to everybody because it's uh, it's tough at the moment, but everybody's doing a fantastic job. So a big thank you. Marvellous. Um, that's answered all the questions that we've had, including the late one. And thank you, Jen, for remembering that we had the late question come in and for so aptly getting the uh, ably getting the response in. I'd just like to thank everybody that's um, been on the call today. It's been really helpful, really useful. Um, I think, you know, I've, I've received some private messages to say that, that they're really useful. They're obviously not brave enough to put it in the meeting chat, but yeah, a really useful um, conversation that's been had today. So thank you very much, everybody. And thanks for those behind the scenes as well. Thank you. Thank you.